and we're back here at Football Theory. It's Guti, it's Ivan, and now we're heading down to South America for the Copa America, who have also round. We've talked about them in the past. It has not been good talking about the Copa America. We've been yeah. both been disappointed, but we have survived the slugfest of the group stage, and now <laughs> we are here in the quarterfinals. Guti, you're laughing. It was like the Super Smash Brothers, like where everyone's on top of that thing. Everyone's playing. It's like ten of that characters and waiting for a character, one character to fall off that like little like platform. And it just took forever, man. It took forever, and I took days off from it. And like Twitter would just keep me updated. It's like another game. It's like, bro, why would I get excited off like your fourth game, bro? Like you know. So yeah, it definitely was something that we predicted, and and you know we called it. We called, or at least you know, I I think we both said Venezuela and Bolivia would be out, and so I think we we hit it on the mark there. Um, so yeah um let's see you know knockout it's knockout soccer and there's there's some teams that can beat each other and they all know each other very very well you know it's not like on where you have teams that have been there a long time or you'll play someone new that maybe hasn't been there in eight years you know like copa america is the same teams every single time there's no guest so they know each other very very well and i don't think any of them are really scared of the other one you know maybe a couple smaller teams might be but the rest of them i think they're just ready to go head to head man so yeah I think the first one, right? I think oh, I'm just going off what I see here, Peru, Paraguay. Uh, I think that's very even. Uh, what do you got? For me, even though I think they're, strugg they're struggling the World Cup qualifying, but I think Peru, um, it's kind of one of those things we talked, we've talked about a few times where you, you have a team on the rise, you have a team um, going down. Peru kind of peaked uh, three, four years ago, making the World Cup, making a Copa yeah. America finals, having these kind of good little runs. I think a Copa America Centenario semifinals run or around a mm -hmm. quarter run something like that too yeah. so i think now you're starting to see the kind of the downfall of it their peak was making it to the world cup you have paraguay who's kind of um from the ashes kind of re coming back they were a fixture in south american soccer in the early 2000s in the late 90s they've kind of gone through a little rough stretch here in the middle of the of the last decade and now they're coming back i think this probably i'm gonna go with peru just because i know uh just because, but I think it's kind of one of those things evenly where they're kind of meeting at these two different directions of where they're going, but I'm just going to go Peru for my gut. I think it's one of the most even games out of the four. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely going to stick. I'm going to go with Peru too. I think they have experienced players, the coaching staff, they have some kind of like a, a little bit of a group going still. I know they didn't call some of their big names, but you know, uh, and, and don't forget they have a Mexican player there. So I'm going to root for him all the way. So Ormeño. Um, so yeah, we'll see. I, I want Peru to win that game. Yeah. And the next one, we got uh, Brazil, Chile. You know, I think Brazil, for me, easily. And, I mean, they've been the best team by far in this tournament, so I'm just going to stick with Brazil. And Brazil and Brazil, Brazil, man. We say that in Mexico a lot. Right? We say that in Spanish, you know, like, Brazil is Brazil. And you can't count them out of a U10 tournament, right? You couldn't count them out of a U50 tournament. So, no, I think uh, Brazil is Brazil. I don't think this is the best Chile team. This isn't that same generation that we're talking about before. This isn't the team that – was going to, you know, back-to-back -back Copa America finals. That was going far in confederations. This, this is not that team. So uh, I'm definitely going to go with Brazil. I think they're going to win um, by a couple goals, actually, to be honest. And I've been hitting it on the yeah, mark with the goal differential. So I'm, I think they're going to go by a couple goals. Yeah, you know, there's a reason Chile finished, I mean, second to last in the group and just barely and made it into the position they are. So, yeah. So then that leads us to Brazil, Peru, into the – for a spawn the semi – to a spawn the finals – you know, similar to Copa, similar to Europe, the finals will be set by the time we record next. So for me, I think Brazil rides it all the way to the finals. <laughs> You're going with the easy one, huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, man. I think Brazil, if they had to play, um, I mean, yeah, in that side of the bracket, for sure, Brazil's going all the way. For yeah. sure. They're going to the final. Yeah. They're at home. Yeah. And you're lucky they don't have their fans because it would definitely be even, I think, bigger goal margin, for sure. Yeah. And on the other side, you got Argentina against Ecuador. I think, you know, Argentina not playing at the heights of Brazil, but they're kind of finding themselves little by little. You're definitely seeing the quality and just the overall kind of, I'm not sure if overwhelming is the word. I think Brazil kind of is overwhelming everybody, but you're just kind of seeing them pick it up as they need to as, they, as this tournament progresses, kind of what we you would expect these good teams to do in the group stage. So for me, Argentina against Ecuador. That's another team you can't count out. I don't care what 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 tournament it is messy or no messy I, I i just growing up you see argentina just be in everything so yeah they're definitely showing their class you know messi's playing this little role where like i'm gonna be there i'll, I'll get you guys out of a couple little things if i've got to score a free kick or put a pass i'll do it um 
So it's kind of kind of cool to see some of these uh, legends. You know, we saw Ronaldo, you know, exit out probably his last Euro game. Obviously, he was pretty upset. Um, so I, I can see, hey, this is one thing Messi hasn't won, right? One of the things he hasn't won. So um, hopefully he can get to the final. Uh, this could be the year. You know, I'm going to... I'm gonna. Write, I'm. I think that it is gonna be the year who he's gonna face in the semifinals to get there. You know, Uruguay Colombia, tasty matchup. Mm-hmm. I think for me though, I think Uruguay they still just have too much talent and they they love this, these kind of moments. They love they love these kind of matchups where they can they can talk themselves into anything into being the underdog. And so for me, uh, Uruguay beats Colombia two uh, zero, maybe three zero. I think. They're stacked, man. Uruguay stacked. They got the they got veterans. They got talent, you know. And they always like we always talk about how small the country they are, a size. It's like how many players do you have, man. Uh, they still got Washington Tavares as their coach. You know, he's like eighty something years old. Um, so they obviously they know what they're doing over there. Um, I can definitely see Uruguay playing Argentina and imagine that semifinal. That would be probably one of the best games in the tournament for sure. It, it, it's in, unless we get Argentina Brazil in the final, then that would be the best game. So yeah, I think both absolutely. of us have Argentina playing Brazil in the final, which on paper, that's easy to say for anyone. But, you know, sometimes you see Colombia, sometimes you see Uruguay come up, but I, I just don't see it this time. Yeah, I don't see it this time either. So I'm with you. I got a Brazil, uh, I got a Brazil, Argentina final. I think I, if there is a team out of the other uh, six teams remaining, I think it's Uruguay to be the other team in that final. Yeah, I agree. I think that's that's probably, what I think whoever gets out of these this game right here is I think, if Colombia could get out of this game, I think Colombia could go, obviously, could, could shock somebody. So I would say out of this game, uruguay Colombia, you're going to see a really, really good game. And then the winner from that would be the third, kind of that third place team for me that could do it for sure. All right. So before we move on, any last words about the teams that didn't make it? Bolivia, uh, <laughs> Venezuela. I mean, it's almost baffling to me how bad uh, Bolivia has been in a, as a federation the last 20 years is just yeah um you figure at some point they would have a generate a generation a couple of talents uh venezuela's also the only team from south america to never make a world cup you know it's it's all it's sad it's almost sad at this point you know what i mean it's it's sad I mean, both the federation it is, but i think you know it, it reflects a lot of what's going on maybe home what we you know where their countries are i think you know we know venezuela's in um dealing with other bigger issues than than, than sports so but, but even with that, you know, they have a great, talented group. Venezuela has some players, man, and they're playing around the world. They're playing in different clubs. And uh, I am shocked that Bolivia hasn't been able to turn it around. But this just goes back to what we said, man, um, that Mexico could definitely be in the Comnebol. And people say, oh, they wouldn't qualify every World Cup. I think they would qualify every World Cup cycle. I think they definitely would get one of the top four or five spots. I mean, you know, obviously it would be tough sometimes, but we just named a bunch of teams that I think Mexico today would be able to beat. So yeah. it just comes back to that argument. Yeah, and I think uh, I think for Venezuela, you're because they were in the U19 uh, or U20 World Cup. Yeah, they got like third place, right? Or yeah, something like that. So you know what you don't want is you don't want that generation to go to waste because it's such a uplifting and it's more than anything, it gives your federation and gives your country hope. You know what I mean? And once that hope is lost, then you're really going back and you're going, man, like you know what I mean? Once. Yeah. Those players from that area, once that hope is lost, especially for a team like Venezuela, then that's what where it's really deflating. Because now you're waiting. Well, now you're going. How much longer is the wait? How much longer is this before it's gonna we be, have the it's idea? It's gonna be a couple more World, World Cup cycles for sure. Yeah. I don't you see know, it in the near future. It's like Bolivia, where it's like you know what what's happening at the youth level that they're just not able to create anything that's competitive and you know what i mean well, i think it's the leagues right like if you go if we go just if you just called only players from the league right it didn't call anyone in europe you know there's no way that you would still you know you're not going to put venezuela or bolivia in that conversation anyways right you're still going to put brazil there right with the best league argentina with the second best league right and it kind of just falls in the line with the rest of the teams that are there colombia chile right um and so uruguay you know uruguayan team so like you know if you go down that way, where is the, where are the Bolivian players going to do it, right? It's not like they're playing in Boca. It's not like they're playing in these bigger uh, teams down in South America. They're not definitely not playing in the Mexican League or in the MLS. So, you know, where 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 are they going to get this talent that, obviously, when these tournaments come around, Brazil now calls all their players that are playing in the EPL, all the, Brazil, all the guys that are playing in Europe, uh, and Argentina starts calling back everyone. It's like, dang, man, it's like, it's really hard. It's a really uphill battle for sure. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's one of those things where you, you almost have to think, think differently and, you know, use what you have as a positive instead of a negative. And how can you do that at the, at the ground roots level, at the youth level to really just create something special that you can, that you can be competitive at least, you know what I mean? It's competitive. And, you know, right now with Venezuela, at least there's still hope from that U20 group and that there's something that possibly can be built for Bolivia how do you even create hope now? This is the, actually the really sad part is that there's no even idea of hope to possibly come. So let's say this real quick, though. This is random. It just came to my head. When we talk about Mexico being able to compete in other confederations, you think you see Bolivia and Venezuela qualifying in CONCACAF? Would they hit the top three and a half spots? No, right? Uh, I think... I mean, they can so fight with them in uh, Honduras. In general, no. I think in general, no. I think in the past... Um, Costa Rica has, has been above both of them. I think Honduras would be, I mean, at the most, I think they would get like a half spot, but I think that would be, I think, you know, and with Bolivia, I'm I'm thinking specifically, you're playing those games in the altitude in La Paz, like that's going to be difficult for for anybody and everybody. You see, that's like where they get the majority of the results and where they get, where they make it like a fortress to play. So the only reason I say there's a possibility of that is because of that is that, but I think if they're, in general, no, I don't think they make it. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, you, you're saying, yeah, so they can't make it in Coca which you know is a couple steps below Conebol. I mean, come on, man, you're putting them in the tough group, you know? Yeah, and I think, you know, uh, part of it that really has to do with what Costa Rica has done in the last uh, 10, in the last 20 years. I think, you know, Honduras has kind of, or yeah, Honduras kind of been there a little bit. And I think now with what you're seeing from Canada and Jamaica too coming on the rise, I think there's the there's a replace there's going to be a replacement between those two nations in in terms of qual and overall quality that i think you know if these guys are playing against each other 10 times i'm thinking i'm taking canada and i'm taking uh and i'm taking jamaica for a more prosperous future if they were in the same federation good point yeah but so i mean we still we're, we're going to pour one out a little bit for you bolivia we feel sorry for you pour <laughs> one out a little bit for you for a little bit of tinto for you, Venezuela, and uh, we're gonna move.